Uh, we're, we're learning more about that suspected Russian hack um, uh, at solar winds. Apparently, it was much worse uh, than first feared. We know that uh, it has impacted a, a number of U.S. government agencies. It looks like Microsoft has also been swept up in all of this. Uh, joining us now to talk about that and also to talk about Tesla in just a moment is Dan Ives. He is managing director at Wedbush Securities. And of course, Dan Howley sticking around for this one. Um, so Dan, thanks so much for joining us. So what kind of a response needs to happen here given this, this huge cyber attack? I mean, don't we need an unprecedented response from global cybersecurity? Yeah, look, I can tell you, 20 years covering the industry, you know, I think this might go down as the worst attack that we've ever seen in terms of U.S. government from a cyber attack perspective. And it's something that this week across the industry, uh, really uh, both in the U.S. as well as Europe, you know, I think this is going to have ramifications for many years to come. I mean, a silver lining, it's a positive for cybersecurity stocks, of course, names like Tenable, SailPoint. Z scale or others, but I think it's a it's just another wake up call. I think it just shows from a cybersecurity landscape what needs to happen in the Beltway to make sure something like this never happens again. It's a black eye for the industry. Hey Dan, uh, I want to ask what you think this means for FireEye. I mean, they were talked about uh, in the hack originally. Um, you know, they were the first to come forward and say that they had been uh, the victims of a hack through these means. Uh, this kind of uh, solar winds, uh, uh, sunburst, uh, malicious code, and then it kind of you know cascaded to the the Treasury Department, uh, and now we're finding out uh, nuclear agencies and county governments, uh, Cox Communications, Microsoft. So I guess what does this mean then for FireEye, uh, being that they weren't responsible for this? It wasn't something that you know what was their issue, but they, as a cybersecurity company, is it a problem for them? Okay, I think right now there's going to be a lot of finger pointing, and I think you're going to see that across the industries. And I, I think it's only tip of the iceberg. I think much more, unfortunately, uh, information is going to come out over the coming weeks around this. Look for FireEye. You know, they're known as the Navy SEALs of cybersecurity, and obviously, them getting you know hacked in this is, is something that you know they they need to recover from. And you know, Kevin Mandia, you're talking about one of the you know, I think pillars of the industry. And I think going forward, it's not just going to be about FireEye, it's about other companies as well. You're going to see vulnerability software. It's companies like Tenable across the board. There's even names like Telos, which is government framework company. So I think what this is really going to do, it's going to spawn a new age for security hygiene and some of these other both public and private players. And I talked about, I think this is going to add potentially three to 500 bips of growth to the cybersecurity industry. You know, I, I was reading uh, Microsoft President Brad Smith, uh, his response to these hacks, basically saying that there needs to be some kind of government entity that shares information across the board, similar to how uh, the Department of Homeland Security came about uh, and allowed for the interchange of information between different, uh, uh, I guess, portions of the government security apparatus. Do you think we're going to end up seeing something like that where we get a, a, a department that allows for the communication across the board, because this seems to be, I mean, look, nation state attacks happen constantly, but they seem to be getting more and more serious uh, and almost more flagrant to a degree. Well, and then to that point too, there's just more data out there in terms of the cloud, more exposure, more endpoints. Think about this work from home environment. You have government employees across agencies accessing data into the cloud. And I do, going back to Brad's, you know, what I white paper, which I would advise everyone to read, I thought that was just, you know, very well done. I think this is going to be a game changer. I think you, you could potentially see a new agency within government, sort of cross-pollination in terms of spreading of information and making sure that this doesn't happen again, because this is something where you could look back at maybe the Target and Sony attacks, but now you're talking government agencies, Commerce, Treasury, and others, and just broader ramifications across the board, also in the in, in the enterprise as well. Because remember, we're talking you know tens of thousands of enterprises that are involved in the solar winds hack. Dan, I want to switch gears here and talk Tesla um, because we see the stock rallying to a record. Funds are running here, rushing in to buy shares before it's added to the S and P 500. Of course, this is going to force index funds that mimic 
the S&P to buy nearly $80 billion worth of Tesla's stock. At the same time, they're going to have to sell shares of other S&P 500 companies. But how will this inclusion, Dan, reshape or change the S&P 500 index? Yeah, and it's 1% of the market cap when it's all said and done. And I think this is, look, it's historic in terms of the magnitude, but also what it says about electric vehicles and what Tesla has done. And of course, that volatility that sometimes we see in Tesla, you know, I think maybe you could see a bit of that more in the S&P. But this is something that, you know, it's a feather in the cap for Musk and Tesla to get this, not just in terms, again, to the S&P 500 and what it means from an institutional ownership and indexing. It's really about profitability because that's what it says. It shows the red inks in the rearview mirror, that shot of credibility. I think it just shows how far we've come. Uh, the last few years, especially in the EV market. You know, the ratings agency, uh, S&P Global Ratings, also bumped up Tesla's credit rating uh, to investment grade today. Um, what does that do? What are the implications for Tesla now that that's happened? Yeah, and that, I mean, now if you add that, call it 12 to 13 billion that they've raised. And remember, that was the biggest issue with Tesla. It's about the balance sheet, capital structure. Now in this euphoric rise, They've been able to, to monetize that in terms of putting that in the treasure chest. And what that's going to do, you know, look, they're almost at investment grade, but I think it just shows you they go on the offensive in terms of capital build out. We see it in Berlin. We're going to see it in Austin. I think eventually we're going to see it in India as well as another factor. And right now it's an arms race in the EV market. And it's just going to give them more and more flexibility in terms of raising debt as well as potential more equity. Before we let you go, Tesla's now trading at about $673 a share. What is your price target on the stock and, and what are you rating it, Dan? Yeah, base case is $560 in terms of price target, but, but ultimately in terms of the bull case, $1,000 if they continue to execute in China. That's why that China is so key. And that's the key really between the base and the bull. I can tell you the tea leaves look very bullish coming out of Shanghai and everything we're seeing in China for EV makers, not just Tesla, but Neo, Xping, and others. I think we're going into a golden age for EV. $1,000 a share. When would that happen to, to your mind? At some point next year? That's a 12 to 18 month bull case if they continue to execute and we see this type of demand. China is the linchpin to that bull case thesis. All right, Dan Ives of Wedbush, always a pleasure. Thanks for being with Thank us. Thank you.